seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. Neil, you were... Uh, I don't remember seeing any. Neil, you were... Uh, walked out of the room and, and President Nixon said, uh, I've decided to do that and I need you to do this job. We're going to do it. It was just amazing. So we were trying to figure out who, who would do what when. He simply has got to have the person he wants in that job. And it has to be someone who's capable of doing it. And it has to be somebody he knows well. I said, I'd like to talk to one person. And he said, who? Donald Rumsfeld was the first to propose Stanley Kubrick. The film would have to be perfect, but the set could never be built in time. The filming of 2001, A Space Odyssey, was drawing to a close in a suburb of London. Why not use the sets there? Rumsfeld was sure that Kubrick would not refuse. During the Kennedy administration, the White House had granted him special authorization to access strategic areas of the Pentagon during the preparations for the film Dr. Strangelove. Kubrick owed them. I told Mr. Nixon, it's very dangerous to lie in the United States. You can't pull a con like that in a democracy. Too many people would talk. It would be absurd. But he said, almost sadly, go ahead anyway. Rumsfeld offered to go and negotiate personally with Stanley Kubrick. He and Henry Kissinger flew to England that same evening. Kubrick was surprised and amused by the idea, but began by refusing. Rumsfeld wouldn't give up. We're only asking you to do one thing. Just leave us the keys to the studio for one weekend, just so we can shoot a bit of film and take a few shots. Everything will be tidied up again by Monday morning. Kissinger flattered him, telling him that Dr. Strangelove was one of Nixon's favorite films. In the end, Kubrick agreed. The fake footage would be shot in England in the MGM studios near Boreham Wood with a skeleton crew. The two technicians and two actors would be CIA agents. To guarantee their trustworthiness, all had to be single men without family ties. They would sign a contract committing themselves to perpetual silence about the whole affair. Once the filming was over, they would have to disappear. But Stanley Kubrick was a perfectionist. Faced with the CIA crew's lack of professionalism, he ended up, against his better judgment, supervising the shooting of the fake moonwalk. But, he told them, from Monday morning, you're out of my life for good.
theories about the movie The Shining by Stanley Kubrick, and my theory, of course, is number one featured in it, and uh, I was reluctant when I first did it because I thought they were going to treat me shabbily, and they didn't, and uh, the critics, however, have not treated me too well. But um, uh, uh, what's interesting about it is that um, not only is it playing in, that, in theaters all over the country right now, but... Um, and not only is it a decent film, although room, room two thirty seven, yeah, room two thirty seven, okay. yeah. There's what well, the the other everyone has a different theory about The Shining. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think my theory combines all the other theories except for what I consider to be the most ridiculous theory in the movie, which is uh, the theory that uh, The Shining was about the Holocaust. I mean, I fell oh, off no, my chair laughing up. so hard yeah. when I read that one. I thought. The, the moon landing theory at least has evidence behind it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, it, it, it's been an interesting experience and very useful for for the whole getting out the truth about Stanley Kubrick. So I appreciate it. And uh, what's interesting about it is is that um, Stanley Kubrick's uh, assistant Leon Vitale, um, who was with him for the last 28 years of his life, he knows. Um, yeah, he. Um, he so he had an article, an interview in the New York Times, I believe it was not last Sunday, the Sunday before, in which I was mentioned among the theories, and um, he virulently denied <clears throat> every one of the theories except for one, uh -huh. uh, of which uh, he uh, decided not to mention hardly at all. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> which happened to be my theory. Very good. And, Very yeah, good. and you know, you can tell more by what people don't say than oh, what they say. Yeah. And he's ripping up the Holocaust theory, he's ripping up the, you know, all the theories that were presented, and uh, then, oh, well, you know, he doesn't hardly mention, oh, somebody just brought an Apollo 11 sweatshirt on the, on the set that day. I'm like, yeah, right, Stanley, who, you know, wrote down, you know, every single thing that should happen on the set would just let someone bring a sweater up on the set that day and put it on the kid. Seven. In the book, The Shining, the room number is 217, but for the film, Kubrick changed it to 237. Here's the true reason why. The Moon, the natural satellite of Earth visible by reflection of sunlight and traveling around Earth in a slightly elliptical orbit at an average distance of about 381,600 kilometers the American Heritage Science Dictionary. 381,600 kilometers converted to miles is 237,000. Room 237 represents the moon. Danny enters room 237, the moon room. This is where Stanley Kubrick films the Apollo 11 moon landing. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black, if you ever thought of it. Saying Will I misrepresented myself. Get it away myself? from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. You in the head. Well, I want you to I want you to swear Get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. Me, okay. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you if you don't leave me alone. So why don't you just put the into the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. 
Mr. Cyril, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Why don't you talk to the administrator in NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. I don't hit people, but you're going to be on the deck unless you get well, I'm heading out. I appreciate it. Get the hell out of the house. Well, I take your stuff and get the fuck out. Why don't you quote me and say it's bullshit? I'm in the shadows in a wrong place. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Of lunar orbit being falsified. Being falsified? Correct. We've got an unedited tape from a source at That's the Johnson Space Center. Yes. Totally nonsense. Mr. Seibel, you do not deserve answers. If you show this publicly, you're open for a lawsuit, okay? We're talking about Apollo, and uh, let's not even talk about whether or not we went there. Let's just talk about yeah. the Cold War and the fact yep. that we had to go there. We had to succeed. We couldn't take a chance on not succeeding. Exactly. A tremendous black eye. So to guarantee success, what's the obvious thing to do? You recreate it. You stage it. So you've got it to release in case something goes wrong. And then they got to the point, obviously, where they said, well, why take a chance at all? Let's just go with what we've got in the can. I, that's my guess, anyhow. Yeah, and, you know, the, the more that you examine it, the, the more actually ludicrous the whole thing gets um, to the point where it's almost a comedy. So I keep digging a little bit deeper, and I finally get underneath this cloud cover here, and a few images pop up. And I say, oh, images, what are they? Well, this is what you got which I'm sure that looks familiar to you, right? Looks just like the pictures they give us of Mars. So I'm just kind of creeping around here and definitely noticing the same kind of undulation changes and same kind of rock, same kind of dirt. Only thing that's missing is that nice little red tint that they pay somebody $150,000 a year to put on there. So I said, hmm, I wonder what they're doing out here. What is all this equipment for? I'm sure it can't be NASA, right? Um, Whose orange hum hummer is this? Okay, that looks like a NASA symbol. Cameras set up, tents, ATVs, food. They've been there a while. It's not a one-day trip. Got their antennas set up, out in the middle of nowhere in Greenland. Things seem to finally be coming together with the moon landing. We were there on the surface of another planet. You could see it on TV. Well, first it was projected onto a silver screen and then the TV cameras were allowed to film off the silver screen because obviously you wouldn't want the real footage. I mean, if you want to go back and look at the real footage of the initial moon landing, you can't because it's been taped over by NASA and no one was fired, no one was punished. Of course, they want to get rid of the evidence. Now at this stage, a band of Apollo faithful will be howling in protest, we did go to the moon. Then why did nothing come of it? Why have we not been back in 40 years? The Apollo faithful will say, Oh, it's budget priorities, we've been there, we've done that, it's not economical to mine on the moon. That just doesn't hold water, that's a load of rubbish. We haven't been back to the moon because we never went there in the first place. So this one here said, roving the Arctic. So what is that? does not make any sense. Pop in here. See if we can find anything. Again, same kind of mountains, that looks like the same kind of water I've seen before that I thought was Water on Mars, who knows? Zoom in, what's that? Oh, nothing. Just looked like it was funny. So I'll keep kind of going through here and see if it, what the? Uh, yeah, so. Mm, I think I found out where Mars is, guys. It's just uh, about a thousand miles north to me. <laughs> Not quite the distance that NASA says. But I can't find anybody who's in charge of this. They must be hiding behind these rocks. Oh no, there they are out in front of everybody, just standing there. Lovely. Clown number one, clown number two, and clown number three. He was playing with the water, with the with the with the paddles, the the uh, hydro repellent paddles. So he was bouncing the the glob of water between the two paddles, and one of the one of the community noticed that his eyes were not following the freaking water. They were, uh, they were jumping into places that he, he had it for a little bit, and then after that, his eyes were completely out of sync with the, with the water droplet. 
But when those guys were playing ping pong back and forth with the water, you'll notice that the girl always is looking above the camera. And the reason why is because they're looking at the the CGI feed. You know, they need to see where the item is that they're playing ping pong with because it's not right in front of them. So once I saw Helmick's video, I really, um, it opened my eyes even more to, oh, okay, because every time I've watched those astronauts, they appear to be watching a monitor above the camera, which, okay, I could see doing that. But on the other hand, if you're just up in space giving an interview or playing ping pong or whatever you're doing, then you would have no reason to look at a monitor. It doesn't matter. The camera's on you. You know that. So it doesn't matter what you look like. You shouldn't care about that. But they're always very concerned with that monitor. Well, that tells me why. It's when they're using uh, props. All right. Let's check out some of these other pictures. I saw another one over here. This one says Drill Hill. All right. Let's go in here. Totally looks like the Mars terrain to me. Just need the red filter. Yeah, if you go look at Mars pictures, go to Gigapan or any site that has, you can even go to NASA.gov and look at all their Mars frauds. Check out those images. They're identical to these. Yeah, this is very empty here. Oh, there's one of those ATVs. All right, now we're on something. Oh, I got another truck. Oh, yeah, it says NASA. What's that say? Mars Project. This thing's just driving around taking pictures. Unbelievable. Actually, if you ask me, it's quite believable. But what do you think? Are they sending scientists up on ATVs to practice on the rover in a remote island in Greenland? Uh, I doubt that. Highly. Here's another scene with Catherine Katie Coleman. Seems to be done in the suspended mode. Have a look at her hair. There's something odd about her hair. I know this is zero gravity and hair is supposed to stick out and go all over the place, but her hair doesn't really flop around naturally. It's always sticking out kind of rigidly. Maybe they permed it in that position, or perhaps they're hanging her upside down. As she shakes her head from side to side slightly, you can see the hair always springs back to a particular position with respect to her head. It should flop all over the place. Here's I Justine. She has a vlog. Her hair flows in the air as it would because the hair is moving through air. So it's going to flow as you bounce around. And on the International Space Station, this does not happen with the women. They do flips, they lay down, they do all kinds of things. They bounce from here to there, they pretend they're Superman. Their hair will never look like that. In this scene, Chris Hadfield bends down in order to adjust something, and you can see on the back of his shirt a couple of upticks on either side where you would expect wires to come in on either side of that harness in order to support it. Of course, they've computer graphicked out the supporting wires. You can't actually see them. It's this Chinese spacewalk. A bubble rises in the pool. It's complete fraud. Here the helmet gets hit on the International Space Station and a bubble rises <laughs> into the pool. And it takes an odd trajectory because it's in a water pool. Houston, we have a problem. Space is broken. Sorry, U.S. government. I uh, have to show them the bubble. There's the bubble in the pool that we just saw. Yep, doesn't even go in a straight line. It's in the water pool. Takes a very odd trajectory because the water is actually moving around. It's not still. Now check this video out. The whole video is about a minute long. I said 45 seconds before was the maximum for full motion mode. It may be more like a minute that they can do this full motion zero gravity mode. Because then the airplane finishes its parabolic trajectory. It has to dip down for a short period of time. There's double the gravity. Anyway, have a look at the end of this. And there's a strange motion to the Santa. 
take a look at the way it moves. It kind of skips out of control, out of her control a couple of times. First it dips down and then up a little bit and then at the end it goes up a little bit and she kind of looks a bit embarrassed like she's been caught putting her hands in the cookie jar. Oops, I hope you didn't see that. No, we didn't see, Katie. Just keep the beautiful smile on your face and that'll distract us from the hoax. So, in this clip, they're talking, live feed, and wouldn't you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station, busy effect. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. At the time of the Apollo 11 mission, Buzz Aldrin was a 32 degree Freemason. They were in good company, as many of NASA's astronauts were also Freemasons. One of the ways we promote ourselves among Masons, a reason to join, is we consider ourselves the University of Freemasonry. And the real emphasis in the Scottish Rite is on receiving more light, uh, learn more about the, the history of our world. We always indulge in a few pagan rites to appease the EVA gods. <laughs> These little ceremonies are very, very important to ensure mission success if you do them right. Another aspect of the illusion of space travel is space walks. These are faked inside a swimming pool. It's a custom-built swimming pool, and that's a great way to fake zero gravity. About six months ago, in 2013, a gallon of water leaked into one of their spacesuits in a matter of seconds. NASA doesn't really have a proper explanation for how on earth this could have happened. There shouldn't be water leaking into someone's helmet and a person almost drowning in space. How can you drown in space? They now wear snorkels to make sure that they don't drown in space. How can this be happening? A snorkel in space? There could be some water in the porous plate sublimator. When they were on the moon, they supposedly had a, about a gallon of water, but that cooling system is supposed to be well away from their head. There really is no sane explanation for why a gallon of water would leak into someone's spacesuit, unless you realise the whole thing is faked inside a swimming pool, which is the faking of spacewalks in a swimming pool. In this vid, you catch a glimpse of someone wearing a scuba tank. Scuba tanks in space? Snorkels and scuba tanks in space? They act like a spacewalk is just a walk in the park, like there's very little danger involved at all. And then they also pretend that it travels in all the same trajectory, and this thing just scoops everything up. And then it has a claw that can grab big pieces of space debris, and then little pieces of space debris get caught on the sides by panels. Of course, there's no in-between. Uh, do they catch the middle-sized pieces of space debris with the box? And then debris drawn one does not send the package down to Earth to get incinerated. No, the whole thing goes down to Earth to become incinerated, and it's fucking useless. So because they say there's over 500,000 pieces of space debris, they have to send thousands of space debris drone ones. But the important thing about this is the camera. They show you a camera on this satellite drone. So somebody is operating that claw and they're getting this space junk. Why can't you see the video from this camera? This thing has a camera. Wouldn't you like to see this thing in operation? Here's a beautiful detailed image from that model. You see that huge swirl of clouds between Australia and Africa, and there it is on the model. And the crazy thing about this is when you type Earth from space in the image search, Earth from space, not NASA composite computer model of the Earth. Literally, Earth from space 
which means you want to see pictures of the Earth from space in the image search, these images will come up over and over and over again. And the sick thing is, they show this model in documentaries about space. They show this to you. The same model with the same clouds. They don't even change it. Here's a picture of Jupiter and the Earth. It's not a real picture, it's an illustration. But see, it's the Apollo 17 image of Earth. It's over 40 years old and they still use it for illustrations in modern times. Here's another image that somebody put together and they used the Apollo 17 image of Earth from space, which you've been seeing literally your entire life over and over and over again. And your kids, as they go to school, they see this image in their science books. There it is used again. In modern times, it's over 40 years old. It's gonna be 50 years old soon. How do you brainwash? Well, you repeat it. You repeat the same thing over and over again. You know if somebody's resisting the concept, if you keep fucking repeating it, after six times, they'll incorporate it in their brain. They may not agree with it, but repeat it another thousand times, they'll start saying it. This is funny, back in the 60s when, when they went to the moon, this is the first time we actually had like an instrument of flight to actually go high enough to actually fucking check out if what we agreed to 500 years ago was real. So if they were wrong after 500 years, the question is, would they tell you? Bouncing, obviously, you know, with something's helping him a little bit, right? Well, Lifting sure. up just a little bit higher. I know the, but then I know as the he, footage. Yeah, as he artfully goes behind a small rock, <laughs> all of a sudden he takes this huge leap, right? And there's a trampoline on the other side of that rock. That's what's going on there. Uh, so Kubrick is using wires, he's using trampolines, he's using slow motion, he's using anything he can to put forth the effect. Here's like a perfect example of them landing on the moon. I mean, it's proof right there. This is an official NASA photo of the first Apollo 11 lunar module landing on the moon. I mean, it's right there. This is proof, man. It's the pictures right there. It's landing on the moon. But the only problem I have with this picture is that it's taken from the moon. <laughs> I don't know what the big deal was with being the first guy on the moon. Uh, it seems the camera crew was already there. A warning about a cult of pedophiles. He, he was trying to, to warn. Yes. You yeah, start yeah, with Lolita. That, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it goes all the way through to Eyes Wide Shut. It's constantly hmm. trying to warn us that there's mm -hmm. a cult of, of well, people tr trying to take our children. It's the cult, and it's here. It and, is the cult. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and they're at work, and they're not going to stop. They're relentless. Oh, no. And they've got less to fear now than they ever had. They own, oh. they own the judges. They own the courts. They own everything. Uh, they are on the they are at They are literally. The final switch. That's right. From there... That point of view I've never seen. And it's funny when you click on Google Images, photo of the Earth, keep going. Because this is realistic. But every, you'll see 40 pages on Google. But it's always the same fucking photo. It's the same photo. They just changed the contrast. Check it out, keep going. Oh yeah, boom, 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 40 pages. Look closely. It's always the same, oh what is that? I guess this is a photo of the Hubble telescope taking a picture of itself. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's an authentic photo of the Hubble telescope out there doing its job. Isn't that amazing how they could take a photo of the thing taking photos? <laughs> out in outer space. Unbelievable. This, this is a moon, uh, a moon they discovered off of, uh, off of um, uh, Mars. The recent Opipapa. And if you do a close-up on it, you see all the craters and the texture of the moon on my shirt. There it is. It's just that. It's just a bunch of pain. <laughs> Next image. And they actually came up with a new term for it. It's a collisionary supernova. Unbelievable that they actually caught this. If you get a zoom in on this, there's a zoom in that Hubble did on this. These are actual fucking suns being formed. Unbelievable. Look at this. All these fucking suns. Can we get another? Keep going. And they're being formed on a Christmas tree. <laughs> Yeah, and this all results from, you know, the early 50s when they studied uh, in the MK Ultra program. So they were studying how to influence people and how to get them to do what they want you to do. And, you know, and that, that's when it began. It began with, uh, you know, in the early 50s and reached the turning point in the 90s. And now we're in this 
place where they're going to start enacting the most absurd things, and and we're and we're not going to be able to stop them. And for sure, they're going to come and take the guns. And to me, it looks like a fait accompli. It's coming. It may not be next year, but it's coming. We're all going to be outlaws. Anyone with a gun is going to be an outlaw very soon. Yeah, sure. And we have we have to decide what that means. And the youth get thoroughly terrorized and brainwashed by all of this as well. They can't see through the lies because they've been lied to their entire life. This is all that they know. I made it to the moon, now on to Mars! And she's kind of famous now when it comes to NASA. This 13 year old wants to be the first person to live on Mars. <laughs> Never mind the fact that it's incredibly ridiculous to believe that they would be sending people to Mars. If people love science, they would figure that out. They would look in to what it would mean to go to Mars. Like, what would it take? What would it be like traveling to Mars? But then you got articles from SpaceX talking about they could send people to Jupiter's moon. So naturally, nobody uses their brain. They think all of this is just a road trip. It's not a big deal. Oh, this is amazing. We just went to Mars. Hey, big round of applause now for the Americans. Go to Mars, and this is the official image of them landing there. <laughs> it's fucking funny. It's like, isn't it amazing how they were landing there and they had, they already had an airbrush artist with his easel set up to paint it land that quick. It's like, unbelievable. How many believe this is real? This is the official landing. Oh, then they got another one with a, a metal sort of pipe and sand in black and white. That's proof. They were there, man. They're landing on the sand. Check it out. That's it. There you go. Some more images. This is what they're doing on Mars right now. Moving around with their little rover. That's a real photo. Look at that. that was, this is another. This is another. I swear to God, they're on Mars right now. Look at that. This thing's moving around. I don't even know what it does. It's like a weird sort of uh, sample collector. It's a spider. It's a spider sample uh, sampler. It's a spider sampler. Sand sampler. It's a sand sampler. They call it. It's and getting spice. It's getting, it's getting spices from Mars. Everybody just accepts all of this because they don't know of the criminal global control. They can't question this. They don't know that there's anything wrong. If you're in a vacuum, wouldn't you balloon? You have the vacuum of space pulling on your spacesuit. They show you videos of where you can put your hand in a gloves in a vacuum chamber and see how hard it is to articulate the fingers and move your hands in these gloves. Yet they do spacewalks in space all day long and they have no trouble handling tools, handling small pieces with these gloves. They have the vacuum of space pulling their fingers apart. No, they have no trouble at all. In real life, they would actually be doing training for spacewalks, also in a vacuum. Why don't they put people in a vacuum here on Earth? Is it because it's dangerous? If you're expecting these people to go into outer space, which is the most hostile environment imaginable, because you got space debris traveling at 17,500 miles an hour orbiting the earth that can kill you doesn't matter what size it is it could be smaller than a grain of sand if it flies through your fucking body you're dead and they talk about micrometeorites they talk about damage that's done to the international space station that's this stuff is supposed to be traveling at incredible speeds if it hits you you're dead and then they got radiation in space oh but does the spacesuits protect you from the radiation how on earth can spacesuits protect you from anything? It is cartoon physics and the people just buy it. It's a cartoon reality. They want you to believe you can do that in a vacuum. You can hold power tools like that <laughs> and work on a space station that needs maintenance on the outside while the vacuum of space is pulling your hand apart. How fast would you get tired? Why is this Muppet straining? There's the new spacesuit we got, Buzz Lightyear, Disney, <laughs> Walt Disney bullshit. Again, why can't you have a vacuum on Earth, put the guy in the vacuum, have him lift up the rock so he can see what it's like to be on Mars. If you need to simulate zero G, put this guy on harnesses, but let him experience the vacuum. Let him pick up the rock in the vacuum. Those videos would exist in real life if this was real science. They would actually be doing that. It wouldn't just be spacewalks are done in water tanks for training. It's fucking ludicrous. And if we could also wake up to the public to the fact that there should be video of an Earth eclipse from the moon, 
video that would have existed a long time ago if NASA actually did work in space? Well, NASA would magically put fake video out there because they can't cover all their bases and they don't want people waking up to their fraud. All you have to do is investigate NASA and think about what should exist. If the space programs were real, what would we be shown? What would be the real science? Wouldn't they test the satellite technology in a vacuum? Wouldn't we have those videos? When you are supposed to believe that countries all over the world have their own satellites. Of course, if satellites were the size of school buses back in the 70s and they evolved all the way down to CubeSat satellites that could fit in the palm of your hand, of course you would have those videos. Of course you would see those test videos. But no, you got nothing. Where are the videos of a vacuum chamber and some technology whizzing around on a string showing that the satellites can be propelled in a vacuum? Doesn't exist from any country, anywhere. It's all cartoon bullshit. You have to question what you were told and you have to look into things because you're being lied to every single day and the fraud of our criminal global controllers is pretty disgusting. It needs to be exposed.